August 2nd, 2023. Um, in attendance is myself, Amy Parsons, Brandy Eisner, Joyce Chunglo, and Molly Keegan, and absent is Jane Evan Smith. All right, so we are going to make a motion to go into um, an executive session to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining. The UPSEU Howdy Municipal Unit MADIV 129. I get us and not to, or, and to reconvene in open session. Second. All right. Um, as chair of the board, I hereby announce the select board will hold an executive session for the following purposes per MGL. Chapter 30A, 21A3, to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining of an um, and an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining yeah. position of the public body. And the chair declares um, that the board shall reconvene an open session. Somebody's got to take the roll call vote. Okay, roll, we'll roll call vote. Roll call vote. Parson? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Yes. All right, and we are back. We don't need to do anything else, right? We can just go right into the. I think so. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to go into public comments. Um, please limit comments to three minutes so everyone has an opportunity to speak. Um, we'll hear comments for 15 minutes. If you're here for public comments and you're in the room, please raise your hand. If you are on the line, please use the hand raising icon. Is there anyone here for public comments? Do you need to ask if anybody else is recording? Oh yeah, I saw just it. right. So you are shut it off. All right. <laughs> okay, sorry. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 22 of Acts of 2022, signed by the governor on February 15th, 2022, I announce this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording the meeting. Okay. If no one is recording, let the minutes reflect that nobody has indicated they are recording the meeting. Okay. Sorry. Back to public comments. Can you hear us? We're good. All right. Yeah, come on up to the microphone here so we can hear you. Hello, um, my name is Greg Durza and I'm from um, Barnout Back in Hadley, Massachusetts, right over here. Um, we're planning on having another um, barn fest. We had our first one last year and it was a success. So we've decided to try to do it this year as well. So I think I'm in the right spot to just let you know that um, on October 1st, it's a Sunday. It'll be a single day. Um, I'm hoping to have at least 15 to 20 vendors this year, and um, there'll be a tent and parking in the back of our back field behind the barn, um, which is plenty of room for a number of people. You want to just run that by our police chief? and uh, That's the next step that I'll have to do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. 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 Is there anyone here for public comments? All right. Moving on to the consent agenda. Warrants AP. 2403S, AP2403, AP2400, AP2402-2, AP2400B, AP2355S, AP2355, AP2042S, AP2402, um, also the fire department fee schedule, effective July 24th. Uh, class two auto dealers license, change of name and DBA, uh, Jim and Ellen Boyle, DBA, Northwest Auto Sales. Intermunicipal agreement, city of Northampton and town of Hadley, municipal hearing officer. Amy, if I can just note that that the amount, we did get a, um, a corrected 
uh, contract for the municipal hearing officer and it's for 500, it's for 500, correct? All right. Can I just pull the um, fire fee schedule just to ask my a question afterwards? A motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I'm oh, sorry. Roll call. Roll call vote. Parsons? Yes. Tunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Iser? Yes. All right. And so, uh, Chief Spanknable, can I just ask, um, are there any highlights on here in particular fees that are changing? That the only uh, change is the addition of Okay. okay, thank you. Motion to approve the um, recommended fire fee schedule. Second. Mocha? Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Fazer? Yes. All right. To old business, um, the food truck regulations. You you have been reviewing it. Yeah, we've been reviewing it. Yeah, I did have um, a comment from Chief Spankneville about um, there was some fire language in it, or there's you would like some more input on that, correct? Yeah, possibly. Um, I'm not sure what it was here, but. Uh, yeah, November uh, 1st of 2018, uh, the select board had approved a um, food truck inspections. That's why we've been, we've been doing them. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure some of that language was incorporated into that if possible. So who's compiling this, the bylaw, the regulation, whatever you want to call it? Is, is the planning board doing this? Is the bylaw committee doing it? It's really, we're doing that. We're getting the input from... Jimmy Max is oh, trying to... Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. the, the bylaw the committee bylaw. compiled it, and it turned out where the planning board also needed input into it. And... After the latest, for lack of a better term, rewrite or correction from the town council, and the town council answered questions that both, if you would, the bylaw and the planning committee, the planning board had, I believe uh, the planning board is satisfied with the current uh, regulation. And although the bylaw committee had some concerns about the original rewrite, the concerns, I believe, how, how we haven't met since that meeting, so I'm kind of speaking unofficially for the bylaw committee. The, the corrections and the clarifications made by town council satisfy the issues that the bylaw committee had. So both board, the, both the bylaw board committee and the planning board are okay with the current uh, regulations. So, Jimmy, I have a question for you. You don't happen to have this in front of you, do you? Um, let me look at my paperwork here. And it's mine, for God's sakes. Well, we probably about it so much. Yeah. No, just, <laughs> what do you? No, I don't have the rewrite in front of me. Um, what's the question? So in section two, purpose, and I know this has been talked about before, and I don't know if it's been rectified in this version or it just got passed over, but it was, we were talking about the select board having authority to regulate food trucks on public property as well as private property. Is that not correct? That is correct. Okay. So section two talks about only in the... on public property and that Even just second, doesn't yeah, seem like I, I know i because i don't have it in front of me though that was specifically asked of the uh council of town council and the reply was that the plant the selectman does have authority 
to issue licenses on private property, the clarification that was made is that they can't, for lack of a better term, tell somebody they have to have, if somebody doesn't want the food truck, the, the, the selectman can't say you have to have it, but the select board has authority to issue a license on private property um, and they can set conditions as to which, uh, in other words, like one of the concerns that the bill had on private property was, well, they wanna put a, a hot dog stand along route nine because of all the work. Well, okay, for the most part, let's say, uh, uh, just pick a vendor, um, the old, uh, in, in front of uh, uh, the rental store where the old Iraqis used to be. Okay, that's a good size parcel. They could put a, a food truck there. However, somebody had like a private private property where they had a half acre or a quarter acre of land, that would probably would not be appropriate for like a hot dog stand during the construction of Route 9. I'm just using that as an example because it's too small. And a selectman would have authority to say, no, you can't do that. Okay. And then th there was a question about whether a public hearing would be required for every. Yeah, instead of it being. Yeah, th that, that, when you speak, when you, <laughs> when you talk public hearing coming from the planning board, the public hearing signifies that you shall advertise it in a newspaper, two weeks notice, it's notify about it, et cetera, et cetera. And what town council intended for a public hearing was that basically um, the abutter should be notified however they are notified by mail by telephone or otherwise leave that up to the applicant no notice in the newspaper required and you could do that let's say you use, uh, applicant application came in today you could schedule for your next select board meeting as long as the abutters were notified and that's what they mean by a by a hearing to the public as opposed to the true cause intention of what the planning board considers a public hearing. So there's no, oh, yeah. notification, no notification, no publication required to just make sure the abutters know about it. So you don't feel the language that says a public hearing is a problem? I think we, you may want, I, that was a question that, you know, Bill and I were looking at, should it be clarified and as a, instead of calling it a public hearing, call it a hearing open to the public uh, where abutters are notified. As long as okay. it's understood what it means, what the intention is, I think you're okay. Yeah, I just think it makes sense to spell it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. And then I think another thing that came up was um, the, an actual public hearing being necessary for something that was like going to happen for one day or two day versus something that was going to be, you know, two continuous weeks and, and on. Yeah. Well, the original, uh, if you would, regulation had, if the, because we were considering a public hearing as a true public hearing, if it was going to be 14 days or less in a calendar year, no public hearing would be required. But if it's going to be over 14 days, then a true public hearing should be required. However, if the intention was simply to notify abutters, then the select board, they're saying here, any uh, food cart should have a hearing open to the public, whether it's one day or 30 days in a calendar year. Amy, can I ask you, your, your version looks very different from mine. Can, and I'm having trouble finding the public hearing. Oh, mine gone the one in board docs. It's- um, Is it the second attachment or the one from the attorney? It's the second attachment. The food truck reg 731. Yeah, it's under section five application. Five. Do you have a section five application on yours? There was a section five. May it might have been depending which copy you had. Maybe it wasn't, wasn't printed out. See what I'm looking at here. Okay, keep going. 
farther down. down. Yeah. Did the yes. You see section five or yet yet or no? Page two. It's on page three. Okay. See my version is completely. Yeah. Application or obviously you didn't pay your internet bill. <laughs> So I have um, used food trucks. I don't have that either. Bullets. Joyce and I have the same problem. This is that uh, it's a dot doc instead of the PDF. Yeah. So we don't have. Uh, okay, well, we can't I, see everything. That yeah, I think that based on the fact that Chief Spanknable wants to make some additions, and we can probably change a few words here that we shouldn't vote on this tonight, anyhow. Um, and can I bring one other? topic up for consider it just um, uh, part of the Hadley Business Council. Um, one question that was brought up at the Hadley Business Council had to do specifically with the, uh, I think more of the Board of Health Inspection than the, the fire and stuff. Um, and kind of in that spirit of differentiating between like a short term versus a, a longer term. Um, also questioning whether if there's food that's being cooked and served versus scooping ice cream. Is there a differentiation in the level of, of effort? And should that that be taken into consideration? So I said that I would just bring that up um, during well, the I discussions. Would, I would think that the Board of Health would make that determination. Yeah, but it would be um, possibly change some of the language in the regs if we were going to ask them to do that, too. So I think, Molly, it st stipulates a, a state reg for the Board of Health. So I, I don't know how they could get around it. Well, that's their purview, not ours. Right. Yeah. So um, I think what I'll do then is I'll just shoot an email, Carolyn, to Ben, if that's okay, mm -hmm. and ask him to. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm hold to the next one. All right. Uh, 5.2. The veterans banners. Um, so, so this is something kept last meeting. You're totally welcome to come on up here, Pam. Um, so the Have These Military Hometown Heroes program is intended to be a living tribute created for the community to recognize and honor Hadley residents who are presently serving or the veterans who have served our country past and present. The intent of the banners is that those um, that sacrifice for our country will never be forgotten. Um, so today we're going to discuss um, a mission statement for the committee um, and then also the potential uh, committee members that we have interest from. I think the mission statement was on there. Yeah, that was what she just read. Yeah, I just yeah. read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we good with that? Yeah. Sounds good. We're on good with that. So yes. how about if we appoint the committee members? I don't think that the ones that are on there is, is too much. Do you? Yeah. I think we've got odd number and we've got different diversities. We've got veterans. We've got Legion members. We've got town like the Boyevers who are very well known around town. I think we got a good mixture of representation of the towns mm -hmm. with those people. I'll make a motion to appoint the uh, committee members that are mention mentioned here, which are Pam Haig, Shelly Boysford, Joe Boysford, and they coordinate being uh, no, they're going to be each separate because that gives us an odd number so. yeah uh myself uh don schabacher and jerry divine and richard coach second motion okay. and second roll call vote parsons yes Bowers? yes keegan yes heiser yes and pam you want we meet we'll be meeting on uh the opposite of select board meetings yes. so on okay. wednesdays Second and fourth um, oh, Wednesdays, and up at the Sugar Shack. Yep. I have one question regarding your banner ideas. Mm -hmm. um, does the town have the authority to allow these on Route Nine? What? No, yep, we have a we have a hand. We're working <laughs> on it with the fire department. <laughs> Do you want to chime in, Mike? I haven't heard the answer yet, so. <laughs> So uh, I was asked by uh, Joe Boysberg, I reached out to both Eversource and to um, Verizon. So we're getting the information on actually utilizing the polls. Uh, apparently all the polls in Hadley are Verizon set. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out what the paperwork is. We had to do this back 
numerous years ago with Park and Rec when we did the American flags would be in memory of. Mm -hmm. um, I have asked to be on as an advisory, in an advisory role because the fire department kind of inherited that program. And just talking with Chief Mason, you know, we're willing to help out however we can. Um, we just did get our, finally get our new lift. Uh, we have our guys certified on that. Uh, we're probably going to actually register it so that we could actually use that to safely put up the flags and these banners. As far as Route 9, we can do that through Mass, uh, Mass DOT. The only concern was, and I think they have a good solution to it, when we originally did the American flags had all the poles approved there with DOT, there were trucks that were actually ripping them off. Uh, however, these can be put on the inside versus the outside on the roadside, so they would be on the sidewalk side. So I think it's doable. Again, it would just be going through that process of reviewing with Mass DOT and uh, Verizon in this case. Thank you. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. See you next week. Okay. Five point four um, code of conduct. Troy's going to. No, no, you got oh, three. Appointment. Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. And they're waiting six. here. I'm Look sorry. At my lord. Too so much computer time. Get them. <laughs> All right. So we're going to appoint the um, the fire part. Yeah. All right. Because they're the. Well, do you want to do fire first? Sure. Okay. Wasn't there a question on the table last yeah, week? So I think we Troy was going to. Do you want to address that first about who gets appointed? Because um, that, that did sense. come up. And we. Between Troy and myself and a couple other employees, we've been doing a lot of research. So, Troy, do you want to start? And I'll. I, I did reach out to the former town administrator, and he gave me kind of his uh, perception. And uh, I think Jennifer had mentioned last year that it had last the last meeting that it had to do with insurance, but that's not the case. And every what we did find out, every single town does it different. Right. But I'll, I'll let I'll. Hand it off to Troy now. So after uh, extensive research of Mass General Law, bylaws, uh, annual town meetings, um, all that information, um, I guess my recommendation to you would uh, would be to um, those that are uh, required by law, by bylaw, or contract by contract, contractually obligated, where they have a term um, that expires. So like a three-year term, like the town administrator, um, then those would be appointed. Uh, all the other requirements could they be- They don't have to be appointed yearly. No, not yearly. No. Just at the end of their contract, term. if their term- Right. Yeah, that's right. what I'm recommending. Is So it, if their term's renewed or the, there's a new person that takes over those roles, that when that- term expires and they they start a new term then they would be reappointed and then for everyone else that's required to be um appointed the one-time appointment once they get um brought on board is my recommendation um and those are um there's one two three four five six seven eight eight of those that are required to be appointed by either law or by law or some kind of contract. Yearly or not yearly? Uh, just initial appointment. There is no, there, no, yeah, there is no, we don't exactly appointing everybody every year. And that's my recommendation is that once they get, well, I thank God I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we were, I just wasn't communicating well thing. enough. To it. Yeah. So on this list that we have here right now, I don't. I don't have don't that have list that in list. front of me. Okay. So are we? Are we going to do this? <clears throat> so we don't once more the way we've always done it, <clears throat> measure, and then the, you're recommending that we change the process going forward. Yes, ma'am. And make a recommendation to accept the employee appointments. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Roll call. Parsons. Yes. Chunglo. Yes. Keegan. Yes. Heiser. Yes. This was for the fire department, Mike, if you had anything to add to anybody's appointments. No, we're good. No, okay. All right. 
And the police, are, are we doing, now we have to do a separate one for the police? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I think we were doing, so we did the fire department, now we have to do like a separate motion for the police as well. Well, we have we have on there two different things. So we have the police department seniority list mm -hmm. and the police department two seniority lists and employee appointments. I'm not sure what that is. The whole thing, your whole agenda items on this. Everybody. So every it covers everybody. everybody. Oh, good. Thank God. Thank you. So. <laughs> covers everybody. I like that. Okay. So we don't have to do the seniority list or anything like that. Nope. Great. Perfect. So what? What now? We have so, appointments. Well, there's another police agenda at six point four. Right. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Can we do that one? Take that out of order while they're here. We have a poor little dog over there that's that wants to bite you. That wants to bite me. Do, um, I mean, can we just? Uh, Actually, the code of conduct might be a few minutes. Yeah, can we skip it? You can do whatever you want, Amy. So, well, not whatever I want. <laughs> That's reason. very dangerous. Within reason. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you want to come up, we'll do the uh, 6.4 um, <clears throat> to approve the memorandum. MOUs. MOUs. Memor memorandum of understanding. And appointments. And appointments. So, I just talked with Troy real quick um, with the the MOAs uh, for lieutenants and the dispatch supervisor. We'll figure out a better way to do this since we're going to do appointments once a year. MOAs are similar to employment contracts. They're just slightly different. Several years ago when we created the lieutenant position and then when the fire chief and I developed the dispatch supervisor position, our legal counsel, who was different legal counsel than we have now, um, suggested we handle it similarly as uh, Northampton PD handles their captains, which is with an MOA. It's like one step below basically an employment contract, but it's outside of a union uh, world, so to speak. So we'll figure out, uh, we put these in front of you each year. Uh, there are no changes from this year to last year. So if you approve of the, the MOAs, you can vote them through and I'll leave them for signatures. Um, but this is just something that we do annually. And, and again, uh, we'll work with HR to figure out a better way to, to do this. If you're only going to do annual, you know, if you're not going to do appointments each year now, maybe we can just put these in front of you annually for signatures and, and unless there's changes. But we have a new lieutenant, correct? We have a new lieutenant, but the MOA is for lieutenants generally. Okay. So it covers both of them. And so are we getting introduced to the public and introduced to new, the new lieutenant? He's he's been a lieutenant for oh, I know. Like so Jesse Green. Jesse is in stand the back. up and say hi to everybody. Is the, he's what the newest lieutenant. Our newest lieutenant. Um Mitch is here as well. Um uh, Meg, uh, our dispatch supervisor, he's, is he's on a vacation. Good so. by that, Mitch. so um, but yeah, there are no changes to the MOAs. They are exactly the same as they were last year. And again, if there are any changes, we'll put it before you. And Megan's our dispatch supervisor. Megan's our dispatch supervisor. She is on, unfortunately, on vacation. She left yesterday. So. Good for her. Yeah. How about special assignments? So the special assignments policy is a policy that I developed uh, basically because, as you know, uh, police and fire get, you know, requested to, to do a lot of community stuff. We do a lot of community events. Uh, some of the events are mandatory. You know, we're going to have to take care of them. We're going to have to do them like parades and things like that. The Memorial Day parade doesn't doesn't just happen. Um, you know, we have a lot of work that we have to do prior to it. Uh, some of them are less mandatory. Some of them are really more voluntary. Just to give you an example, tomorrow afternoon, uh, myself and several officers are going to go over to Golden Court to help them move some of the objects away from their windows outside so that they can redo all the windows in their in their complexes. So I wrote this policy. I presented it to both unions for impact bargaining the way that we're supposed to. Uh, everyone has agreed that it's appropriate. The last step is to put it in front of you. And essentially all it is, is um, it, it allows the, the agency, the department to still command and control these, uh, you know, these events and make sure that we have enough people to handle them. Uh, but it's kind of a twofold hopefulness on my part in that uh, it will encourage more participation for these voluntary events so that we don't have to order people uh, into duty to do them. 
uh, and also will reward them with a higher rate of pay um, to uh, to kind of help out and and jump at those uh, at those tasks. So that's really all that policy is for. So is this incorporated in your current your budget, or is this yep. addition? Yep. This is well. This is it, it's in court. It's it's it will be able to be covered by the budget. I have total control over what these events will be. You know when they will be called special assignments, um, but more likely we will use our community policing budget, which is um, funded off of donations, anyways. So it likely won't even touch the uh, the actual operational budget. Okay. And when is our when does our canine pup go out? How is he doing? Does he's doing he good. Bite people. He's doing there. great. No, he's doing great. He's, he's uh, public. I'll I'll bring him up next if you if you call my if you call that next agenda item next. I'll I'll bring him up after you. Um, but, yeah, you got to do these. A motion to approve the MOUs for Lieutenant Cook, Green, and Dispatch Supervisor K. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Parsons. Yes. Jungle. Yes. Keegan? Yes. Heiser? Yes. Had a stroke for a minute. Don't laugh. Right, you come um, out. And the policy, if you, you know, uh, as far as the, the select board goes, if you want to take action on it and vote it through, you can. Otherwise, you can take no action and it will go into effect in 30 days. I don't think we need to take any action. Yeah. It's your call. Do you need okay. it to be effective before 30 days? Uh, that would be great, actually. Because we may have something come up. Well, oh, then motion to accept. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? We'll call the vote. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Kaiser? Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. So where's what where where's the dog under? Here comes the dog. <laughs> He's been sitting back there quietly for a while, so we'll see how this goes. And Jake is covered in hair. Yes. <laughs> so um, this is uh, this is Jake Marini and Fitzgerald. OK, um, you uh, you recognize Jake. Jake's actually been in front of you a couple of times in the recent past uh, to be made uh, an acting sergeant. That is his current uh, technical rank. He is an acting sergeant right now. He's been with us since 2018 as a special police officer, uh, and he was quickly promoted to full-time and attended the full-time academy in Boylston. Uh, Jake has a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice from Winnick, uh, and he has worked within the area of public safety since he, uh, since he was attending college. He worked as a student patrol officer, a park ranger, and then as an officer for uh, Chief Woodrow, who some of you probably know. Uh, Jake has been in the role of acting sergeant on two different occasions now, uh, but with staffing changes and, ad and adjustments, we've had to kind of bounce him around a little as we have with uh, several other folks. He has never shrunk from taking on leadership roles and helping with the many administrative duties in our department. Jake has also taken on the role of rebuilding our canine program, as you can see, and he and Fitzgerald were certified as a canine team in 2021. They have quickly become very busy both inside and outside of our community uh, at different public events as a successful canine team, helping our department and other departments search for lost individuals uh, and even finding some individuals who didn't want to be found. Uh, Jake has many skills, and we would like to be able to utilize those skills to help continue to move this agency forward but would also like to reward his hard work by permanently promoting him to the role of sergeant. So with that, I would like to recommend to the select board that Jake Marini be promoted to the role of permanent sergeant for the Hadley Police Department. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? So that means we make Fitzgerald a sergeant too. I love his bow tie. Does he have a bow tie on? Yeah, he has a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard to look at. He looks like my Charlie that passed away a few months ago. So it's like those eyes. Roll call vote. Parsons. Yes. Chunglo. Yes. Keegan. Yes. Heiser. Yes. Congratulations. Welcome. I think that was all I had. Yeah. Has he been out in any community things yet or not yeah. yet? Yeah. 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 He enjoys being around people or a little still shy? 
Yeah, we're handling him a little bit different than the last the last canine. Uh, yeah. We're not allowed to be as as quite as eco friendly as before. But yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. All right, five point four code of conduct. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Oh, Thank you. Supporting. <clears throat> Right no, employee appointment. That was your end? no. No, during the code of conduct. So it's yeah. good to go back to old business. Okay. I thought we were at the. You guys ex voted to accept it, in so it's just signatures today, right? This, yeah. Well, it's second. Yeah. It's you didn't vote last time, did you? Yeah, did they you did. Them? Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. For the code of conduct. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we did. I thought we yeah. did. I... They voted. Was that your first time seeing it? Mm -hmm. Oh well, Troy, had, we had seen it originally, mm -hmm. and then Troy mentioned that some revisions had been made mm -hmm. um, based on uh, you had just accepted the revisions from town council. Uh, from, uh, from Maya, they came from Maya. From Maya, sorry, yeah, yeah. and that they'd been incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So. In case we didn't vote, because I honestly don't remember, I make a motion to accept the code of conduct as well as the Hadley Board Commission yeah. Committee handbook. Okay. And it is that. Oh, hang. Excuse me. Oh, I'll second that. I'll uh, have version. Do you want to make well, a comment? Well, we're going to do I first and second, and then we'll do open yep. to discussion. Yeah, motion made and seconded for discussion. Well, that's what the board's. No, we'll do, we'll do public comment. Is that second? I, I'll do a second on that. Okay, motion and seconded. <laughs> Is there any discussion? And can we allow discussion? Because it would. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If he's. Yeah. It's on topic. It's Bill. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I know. Just... Question. Bill, is your yeah, comment on the conduct? Quite on the code of conduct. Code of conduct, okay. Um, so I just had a question about the applicability of it. And is it the intention that it will apply to all boards elected, elected boards as well? Yes. Or should we be, as an elected board, be adopting our own version of it? Sort of a question of, do you have the authority to impose a code of conduct on another elected board? I don't know the answer to that. You might, but... It might also be something that and there are only a couple of us, Court of Health, Planning Board. Um, maybe we should adopt it separately. I think it applies actually what I it's assuming is that it applies to all committees, that there is a code of conduct for any uh, committee that we appoint. Um, and I think uh, Well, that's another point here because right. the applicability clause of it mm -hmm. um it talks in this is just clause two and i may be getting hyper technical but that's what people pay me to do um it applies to uh select board to all other town boards commissions and committees appointed by the select board or town administrator mm -hmm. so i'm just not sure if you intend that to extend to the planning board, I don't object to extending it to the planning board, but the way it is worded in that clause raises a question about whether your authority is only over who you appoint and not over others. I think, yeah. and this is a good question for Maya, because I believe that's who drafted this, right? Um, clearly in the purpose, they're saying all boards commissions and committees for the town of Hadley. Yep. And I'm wondering, Bill. It, it would where, benefit from a semicolon. I, I was just going to say, if, if that comma were changed to a, <clears throat> yeah. a semicolon after boards, commissions, yeah, I don't and be committees appointed. Yeah, I don't want to be hyper-technical about it, but as worded, okay. it is ambiguous. Okay, so, Bill, I think this will help you out. At the uh, last line in paragraph one, purpose, Select board encourages other boards and committees of the town who are not appointed by the select board to adopt these guidelines. Okay. So I think you're, okay, you're I certainly, going down the right road. Yeah, I skimmed over that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I read it too fast. I focused in. So, yes, this so, is not applicable to other boards. Should 
we be adopting that? And I don't know if Jim wants to chime in on that. So we have the planning board, the board of health, board of health. Um, who else do we elect? Assessors, and library trustees. assessors, and library trustees. Yeah, I think it would make sense if we were all on the same page, with so the same document. So perhaps you want to send a recommendation around to the other elected boards that we we too should adopt this. Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. Get a list together. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think when we send it out, it will be a point of reference for the other boards, and we can say exactly yeah. that. Yeah, they I, might I think need. We, yeah, we need yeah. to yeah. Mm -hmm. point out that they should. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I, I just wanted to be sure because it, it did seem a little ambiguous. Mm -hmm. It's like the ethics thing that everybody is supposed to do on an annual yep. basis, that mm -hmm. type of thing, and it applies to everybody. It it, it does, it but of, Randy, I see Randy's point that it be. And you can see that paragraph two might be read at odds with paragraph one or consistent with paragraph one. So, but I, uh, yeah, I think there's enough language in there to, to indicate that what you're thinking is correct, in my opinion, anyhow. So I think we should recommend that all the other elected boards mm -hmm. adopt this. Okay. Uh, I think there was a motion and a second and yeah, no discussion. Yeah. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yep. Heiser? Yes. All right. Uh, 6.1 Mount Warner Wells update. I don't, um, no, don't see him anywhere. Scott is not here. He's on vacation. She's on vacation. Okay. So we can, can put that table on. this then. All right, so now we have all of Linda's together. <laughs> end of year transfers, Linda? Yep, end of year transfers. Yeah, come on up. Okay, so uh, the year end transfers, this is something that we do every year. Uh, we have departments that overspend their budgets for legitimate legit reasons. Um, we can, I can run down the list if you want. Um, and then we have other budgets that have departmental budgets that have extra money in them. Um, so what we have to do is uh, we have to transfer between those departments and even out the budget. I want to assure you, even though this is one hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth of transfers, it's uh, actually. Um, only 0.6% of our entire $20 million general fund budget. And we still have over $500,000 not spent in that budget. So this is just a matter of evening things out. I think to come in that close, we've done uh, fairly well. Would you like me to run down the list or? Um, or just take questions maybe? Okay, that's fine too. You have questions. Uh, if you have the list before you, the first ones are all about uh, the, are are they in the transfer in column? Those would be the departments that need money moved in, and then they're coming out of the next uh, the last four departments which have excess funds in them. Mm -hmm. So I just had a question: the public safety complex, um, building public safety complex, electricity, and then building maintenance, mm -hmm. it's like thirty seven thousand. What was going on there? Uh, the, um, the electricity, you said the electricity first, not the building one, but the, which one, the what's two. the, it says, um, 16,000 for the electricity and then yes. maintenance. Okay. So the, that would be, oh, it is the public safety. Okay. That's, uh, 190 and, um, we're doing electricity operations. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's electricity bills came yeah. in much higher. Right, it it did, and there is uh, not all of the uh, building ones came in that much higher, but I guess we're still getting our footing on the public safety complex. Um, are all of our buildings on the congregate, like homeowners? Are they all on on the aggregate? Okay. aggregate. Oh, yeah. They're all in budget one ninety. Right, but are they actually on the aggregate? The like the, the cost savings, there's a, we have a uh, kind of bulk. It's almost like bulk buying. Yeah. Okay. Where we, we go out to bid. Yes. Are these all our, okay. Yeah. Because like yeah. the town residents can apply for it too, yeah. if they choose to. Okay. 
Well, yeah. that's what maybe is this really just the public safety complex or is this? Yeah, we've uh, 25,000 was budgeted and it came in at 41. Ooh. It is the year before. I We might have under budgeted. Um, we we were doing a little trimming um, of the electricity because at the time we were doing the budgeting for this year, the electricity rates were actually coming down and then went up again. So they had spent 30,000 the year before and 21 the year before that. But I'm not sure that was a full year. Um Oh no! This is the public safety building, not the um, not the substation. Yeah, it it is a jump, but I think it was mostly in rates, and it'll be certainly something as we're doing the twenty five budgets that we will look into more closely to see whether our estimates are off or where there's a change in usage. But I we didn't explore the uh, full amounts of each one. But it is actually on that line. When I first had looked at these, I thought, oh, maybe she's using um, just one line in there as, uh, to, to, as a catch-all for everything that's short in that departmental budget. But in this case, it is actually 16000 on that line. I'm just wondering, you know, because yep. we get into budget season, too. I mean, that certainly begs the question with electricity bills that high. Right. Uh, well, looking at right. Putting solar on or? We did we did find that it was towards the end of the year, the last two months in particular, that it had gone up to the point where um, in March, this is the 190 budget controlled by a select board or Jennifer uh, pays most of these bills. She was actually making plans for doing the, the, uh, uh, the investing in the telephones because there was excess money in this account. And then that got neat up very quickly in the last two months. Not only did the full amount budgeted for the department of uh, get used up but as you see we went over so could we um, maybe carolyn have gary um because gary's doing all the buildings now right mm -hmm. maybe so at we, some point have a, yeah just yeah a discussion uh, about yeah we'll we'll actually about, tomorrow, we talked about this tomorrow yeah. we'll, we have a green communities meeting so he's going to be participating oh, in that okay. as well okay. i think one of the things too when we were budgeting last year for last year's mm -hmm. budget um, it was a really, it was an unknown for everybody what right. electricity was going to be. And the intent was, and Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, we had talked about, we had built up the reserve uh, fund line item to be able to, if we did go over in some of these, we were, it was just such an unknown, um, but we got it so late. We got that bump so late in the year, we didn't use a reserve fund transfer. And so we, it was just a really hard year to, to budget for. So to Molly's point, have we looked into putting solar on this building? What building? This is public safety. This so, is select board. I mean, that, I mean that would be uh, that's your. You got another three hundred thousand yeah. dollars in your pocket sitting well, around somewhere. But Joyce, if the overrun alone was, <laughs> I know. But where are you going to come up with the three hundred thousand dollars? Well, it may pay for itself in a fairly short well, yeah. time. Yeah, and, and so could we just at least maybe we can figure out have it how to have a discussion we about yeah, it? Get, let's we do that. Get bids in on this place. And you want right. to go out to bid for let's, the let's talk public, about public this safety. Yeah. Great. So we should have a discussion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would love to. But we can't even get anybody to give us any bids on this building. That's pretty That's upsetting. Good. I know. Well, I'm bringing it up now that we can't even get yeah. a bid on one building and you want to jump onto another. Anyway. But we will I, we will look further. I mean, we, we carry these overruns into our next budget season. And... Uh, as I look at the electricity and the other budgets, they they overran, but not not to the extent that the public safety building did. So it could be a case of uh, not all the bills were paid last year and that got swung into the new year or something. But um, we will look we will look into that more and see if there's a, a particular reason that that. If we had known that people had wanted to do this, I mean, instead of us putting our money into fiber optic for all the buildings in here, we could have taken the money that was left over from the fire station in North Hadley and put on solar on the uh, main building. But we didn't do that because we used it for other purposes. So, and, I mean, hindsight is... And we're not uh, done with that either. Yeah. Um, and there may still be... Um, there may still be money left over in the buildings. I don't, I don't know what not there much. will be. There's not much left over. Yeah, no. not much. Yeah. I don't know if there's enough to cover this. No. I think you had another question as well. For the, um, Any other questions? That was on? the only question I had. Oh, okay. The transfers. I was fine with the transfers. Okay. Okay. These come from the accountant and I do all the budget. So if you have other questions. Um, Thank you, Linda. That's uh, that's fine. This is one reason that we do put all of the electricity in a single budget instead of every individual department uh, building's budget, so that 
um, we can handle overruns in one place instead of getting requests from multiple departments. Mm -hmm. So, all right, with that, you know, we do need a vote on it. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the transfers in and what was left on the other budgets to supplement the transfers in. Second. Motion and second. Roll call. Parsons? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Iser? Uh. Okay, so the next item, we're determining useful life of DPW equipment. This relates to borrowing for the equipment that we uh, authorized a special town meeting last fall. Um, we are... Uh, planning a um, a large um, short-term borrowing this September, uh, $1.8 million for uh, many of these larger pieces of equipment. Now, the reason we have uh, determination of useful life at this point is that these larger items that we are covering in this ban, we're going to borrow for a year and probably combine them with other large items. We've got a few things on your agenda um, on, on the town's agenda for um, uh, relating to like the town fields are coming up, the um, the truck. department, uh, DPW building, that plan. So there'll be some large items and there will very likely be a, a bond coming up in uh, FY25. Would so, you be putting the fire truck on that also? The fire truck, uh, yes, yes. I, I, I hadn't heard you. Sometimes it gets very soft in here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the fire truck too. It's not part of that 1.8 million, but we're anticipating that for mm -hmm. um, probably for the bond next year, depending on the uh, timeline for ordering and, and buying. Mm -hmm. that piece of equipment. So when we are expecting items to go into bond, then we run it through bond council and they do a legal deter a determination to make sure that we've got all our ducks lined up in a row and that these are suitable for going into bond. The standards are different for bond borrowing than they are for uh, for short-term ban borrowing. So in this case, um, we, we can easily uh, borrow these over five years unless the uh, Ten, unless the select board will vote, as I'm asking you to do tonight, for a longer useful life, which I think is very appropriate, the way the town uses up its trucks to have the actor truck, the plow truck, and the ton, the five-ton sander, those amounts being 500000 400000 and 300, uh, 310000 So together, those three vehicles are $1.2 million. So we would like a determination that they are... Um, a good. I'm asking for a maximum useful life of 20 years, although we probably will aim to borrow it for 15, but I would just like to have that flexibility as we watch the interest rates over the next year. I'll make a motion that we recommend a maximum useful life of 20 years on the DPW Vector truck, DPW plow truck, and DPW five-ton sander truck for purposes of the treasurer's borrowing. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Parsons? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Heiser? Yes. Okay. All right. And then the next one. And uh, if I could just wrap up on this one, this is going to need to be uh, for, to, for submitting to bond council. I need um, you as clerk still here uh, to, to sign the vote. Are you going to be around or is it something I can fill in the blanks and have you do tonight? I could do it tonight. Okay. All right. I'll, 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 I'll do it back in my chair. Okay. And then the Third and last one for me, Carolyn and I, I don't know if you want to lead it into it, but we have been discussing um, uh, options for uh, budgeting programs with ClearGov. We keep, we keep going? <laughs> yeah, keep going. Yeah, it's budgeting. All right. It's financing. <laughs> so uh, ClearGov has modules. We actually talked about this a year ago, and then uh, at that time, the uh, the needs of HR in going forward with um, the wage study sort of uh, went to the front. And so we got this pu pushed off. So um, I can explain it to you. I'm going to start right out with the price and tell you that we're hoping that this will uh, be covered in year one by the community, community compact grant. So we would like that as the initial seed money for it, but you need to be aware there's a carrying cost after that. But so the cost, if we were to do the modules that would cover the operational budget and the capital budget, and uh, we've recently been talking uh, with, with Troy about whether it would cover a personnel budgeting 
module. That depends on a few other things, which he can explain. But if we were to go for the whole group and maybe even throw in the budget book, we're looking at about $35,000 year one. Carrying costs after that would still be in the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range. Um, why we would do that is this is a real, this is a good program. We are in need of a budgeting program going forward. We are looking at succession planning. Um, I'm a, I'm a, an Excel geek. David was an Excel geek. Um, it is very time consuming. And when we move from year to year, we have to insert columns for every year and make sure that the totals go over to the summary page. And there's so many ways to make a mistake. Um, and, and, it, and there are so many other things that I could be doing too with the time. I'm not sure it's going to save time one in, in year one. And I, I don't want to promise that it will, but the idea is if we can get this rolling, that it will work well for for future years. My primary interest, if there was to be one, would be the operational budget. And when I looked at the programming and how it is, and, and if you any of you had a chance to go through and listen to their um, their micro demos, their, their um, forms and the way it lays out, it pretty, it looks so much like what it is that you see in the budget book and the way we have prepared the budgets over the last few years. You see each Doug department and all of their lines, and then a summary sheet and what the total budget is elsewhere. And it's constantly doing that addition for you. It would have the same capacity that we do as far as submitting the requests, the town administrators recommended uh, budget, and then the finance committees recommend budget, recommended budget, and then going to town meeting. It is so logical in, the, in its appearance that I think it's about as user-friendly um, a leap that we can make into full budget programming, um, which I think is, which I think is really important. Um, the other, the other um, module, oh, it also does the, starts out with the revenue um, projecting too, which is exactly where we start with all of the same categories of revenue. It would be, all, it would look very much again, like the kind of the sheet that we prepare for you to look at revenues before we start the um, start the budget cycle. Um, the other module, which is equally ex exciting, but um, not as vital would be the capital budgeting one. I really liked that one because again, it's laid out very much uh, the way you would want to see it, which is the way we have developed it over the years. It generates the request forms to the departments. Um, it has, a, it, uh, it groups them into funding sources. So if these are water reserves, you're going to see that right away, right from the beginning, instead of at the end where we go, okay, now where are we going, how are we going to pay for all these? Right from the beginning, you would be allocating into the different funding sources and you would uh, be able to keep an eye on that. Plus, plus it then tracks project management after the fact, which um, matters in some areas. Um, the projects, for example, not the purchasing of the vehicles, but when you're... Um, when you're doing a building or um, construction on the roads, various things, you can keep track of those um, projects, which is just, you know, you know, which is a nice bonus. I mean, that's part, not part of what I do, but it's part of what the town should be doing. And so if we have that as a part of a program, I think that would be, um, that would be very advisable as well. Um, I, I like it. And I think that even at the even if you're talking about twenty five thirty thousand a year, where we're at the point where we're always talking about being understaffed or we need more help or how are we going to get all these things done? And our initial thrust here is trying to find well, let's get the best, let's get the most out of who we have there for as long as we can, and um, and and we want to make this transition while the people responsible for it, and I'm sort of expanding it into a plural because I am extending this over to HR as well because we have um, you know, an excellent person who's been doing HR payroll and benefits for a long time. I think that we are both a little um, wondering what's going to be happening over the next few years and to have the transition to programs happen while we are there so that we have the history, we'll call it uh, we'll entitle it what the town's always entitled it. We can help make these things be as familiar 
um, as possible so that we have the best continuity going forward and hopefully be able to hand over um, something that's running very well to the next person. And um, I don't know, Troy, if you want to add in or if you just want to wait and talk about it, but I, I think that, that that by concluding the personnel one, it gives an option for um, the personnel budgeting part of the program will be very helpful as far as what if we do a 2% COLA? What if we do a 4% COLA? What if we do one? What if we just do steps? Um, it will track uh, the steps. So when you're doing your union negotiating, um, you'd be able to see these various options. So we thought at first, well, great, this will cover all the departments. And then Troy also finds that they have other needs in HR and he's found other programs. Um, so perhaps going on into looking at another kind of program for HR also to be covered under the com community compact grant. A different grant probably would enable us to do more exploration in that area and try and um, sort of achieve the same things that I'm talking about in my department. So, um, you know, Linda and I had a great conversation today about this platform. And I think certainly uh, what she's presented tonight as far as beneficial um, you know, and, and how the the programs talk to one another is ultimately viable. And I support her her assertion with a hundred percent with the uh, the progression planning um, and, or succession planning as as we're starting to move forward. Um, so it's uh, it's definitely something that we should consider when we talk about the personnel budgeting. Keeping in mind that this is a, a personnel budgeting software, it's not a personnel management software. Yeah. So as, as Linda gave as an example, it's a great, um, has some great tools um, for um, us to present to you as, as the board when we go into negotiations, uh, collective bargaining agreements. If, if you uh, were to advise us to run, you know, different scenarios we could present those in a uh, in a very graphically depicted format uh, to be able to show you hey here's the impact of each each one of these scenarios and it would help you make a, a better informed decision of what that impact would be on the overall payroll budget um, that's uh, but it also uh, talks specifically with the the capital one or the planning one? Um, the, the, oh, the, the this yeah. module. Yes, they all talk together. And yes, so if you set it up and say these are this is these are our plans for personnel this year, and it's like boom goes. It appears on the right lines in the operational budget. Could this help um, the police chief as well? I mean, and Mike Mason we, and Mitch. I know they're constantly. Yes. Yeah, but this is no. I mean, yes, you're right. So okay, that we were just talking this afternoon about a couple of uh, more exploration that we need to do because I know that the um, the police department has been looking at various things. What um, we we want to make sure that this works for them, and also is we want to explore use of this other program or or Troy does for his purposes, and it turns out that that will do try, uh, track. Um, employee timing, which will help a lot with payroll. Um, I think you realize now if you walk in, everyone's still doing hand payroll sheets and turning them in. And there, so there's a similar issue of how we're going to move forward in that area. So it would basically work in everybody's department, some some module or some point. Some so mod that there, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. tracking yeah. to any, any one of their departments, which would certainly help for um, personnel and their records and so on and right. so forth so sort of sort of yeah sort of it's a, be well, a different, it's a fine line yeah yeah this would let you know like um how much are if you wanted to know how much are we spending on payroll um linda could give you that answer or, or the person but they have contracts to police right? yes oh absolutely you know that type and of we thing. could break it yeah. down by department and so on and so forth so you could see mm -hmm. contracts versus yeah. union so on and so forth mm -hmm. So is there, um, I, I think like this all sounds super awesome and I love it. Uh, and I think some things people are going to ask is about the, the 
the cost of it. Mm -hmm. So now are you doing like an, is it an initial fee with a yearly subscription or is it a purchase per license? Right. It has to be, it has to be an annual amount. The, um, the setup fee for each of the modules is uh, actually for all of them together on, on ClearGov is $7,000. And then, as I said, if we do all three of them, it's still another $26,000 a year. And yes, it's legitimate to ask that way. I mean, we've, we've sort of, we've gone, we've, we've gone through this thinking, well, you know what, they don't, computer programs are not, they're not to replace people, um, but we are, um, the, the accuracy, I mean, if we, is I think extremely important. Um, the flexibility is very important and attracting future people to these jobs in town hall is very important. Um, we have, well, we have our summer intern who's still in college who comes in and I thought I was good at Excel. <laughs> um, so to take people in that category and say, come on, working town government, come to town hall. We want you to be, you know, this is a good area for you. Oh, great. Let me see what you've got here. Well, here's our spreadsheet and here's our, here's our paperwork. And here's the, here's the form that the, the uh, DPW fills out by hand for each employee. I mean, we really, if, if we want to attract people or, who are want to wrap their hands around arms around this and and get this going and make a career out of it. I think we have to establish that we um establish a good a good basis for it. And we make mistakes. I mean that's part that I have I have to say no matter how good we are, there's not a single spreadsheet that I've come in here all great and put it up there and I say, geez, you know, as whether it's a math error, hopefully it's just a spelling error. I've done that too, but it is, it's very difficult when you are proofing yourself because we're all one person. We're just doing our own spreadsheets and it's just so easy to make an error. So have, and, I mean, this is a $20 million organization. And if you just think of it that way, there's no $20 million organization out there that's doing their budget, mm -hmm. you know, with Bondo and, Pencils and I mean, and that's kind of where we're stuck. And I think, you know, I, I think we need to continue to try to educate and reorient our thinking mm -hmm. around um, making an investment. It's like you're saying, this is this isn't just, oh, okay, you know, are we going to if we spend the twenty six thousand dollars, does that mean that we're going to save it somewhere else? Well, no, but it's also the opportunity cost of not then having to add at some point a part-time person to do pretty mundane data entry mm -hmm. kinds of things because it's all in here. And then your right. your very valid point about succession planning. Um people want to work with good tools right. and and we and may it freeze up your time. And we, uh, we may ultimately need to hire that person if it, and if we said we're going to hire a person is twenty six thousand dollars that wouldn't sound so outrageous, but to say we need a $26,000 program, it doesn't take benefits. It's not going to have not, health. It's not going to go on vacation. One gram. Yes. It's multiple so and it's helping what every that's day. what you're looking at. You're not saying it's one program where you would have to hire somebody for each department. You're looking at buying a program that's going to be used in several departments. That's right. So yeah, right. That's right. So, so right now I'm sending I'm sending out the budget. Brainer. I'm sending out the budget Excel sheets to every department. They're filling them out, um, and then they're sending it to me, and I cut and paste in. This way, this is on the cloud. They will log in themselves. Mm -hmm. Chief Mason will sit there and, and he'll see his budget there, and he will he'll just he'll just enter those numbers in, and they'll be there next time I open it up because I take a whole. I'll say, well, we need it in by this date because I'm going to need two weeks to assemble it, you know, put it together, cross check it, and then I'll have it ready for you in two weeks, Carolyn. I'd like to be a week, but but let's just say two. So, I mean, this is going to happen in real time as they submit things. And we can see right away when we've got issues. And um, I don't know if it will speed the budget process because I think we we will continue to go over it, but it will make it better sooner we'll have a we'll get a handle on where we are earlier in the it can yeah. also be published in a very user-friendly way on the website because one of the big selling points behind this is also promoting transparency to the public and, and this is true but i'm not sure i want to do that in year one well no 
for some year one, but I mean, eventually when you get into a rhythm. Yeah. I think that we will, there is a point where this is, this is the public, uh, you know, maybe two weeks before town meeting or something like that, or after the finance committee, this, this is the, uh, turn the switch on point. So I think that we need to, we need to do develop that. I have to say, I, I bought, I, kind of balked at doing this even even two or three years ago now there's something else to learn um and we have had trouble enough finding time to meet with these people let alone i said well now you see we are so short of time i don't know how we're ever going to use this but when i did take the time and i went through them um i thought you know what that's so logical this was really making sense to me and you just enter it it says you know it says Town hall and insurance amount. Boom, 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 boom. Done. It's and how many amount. municipalities are already using it? It's pretty. They did have they did have a number of them that have used it successfully. Mm-hmm. Um, there is there is. Uh, it will also produce your budget book. Um, oh, for another couple thousand dollars. I mean, so what I'd what I'd like to do is to take advantage of the community contact grant and get everything that we think we might want going forward so that we can get through the setup. We can drop it down and say, you know, Troy's got better ideas, other ideas for personnel. So maybe we'll move this one out or honestly, the budget book's not that big a deal. So we'll move that one out. But I'd like to, um, a, a month ago, I was saying, let's do just, just do the operating one. And then I've tripped and broke my wrist and Carolyn says will you be able to type and I'm like I don't know and I thought now then then what happens then what happens to what if this was the middle of budget season um so I mean much hmm? it doesn't take much (laughs) it doesn't it doesn't it's right so what do you need from us so So, that's the vote to I have a question first before we get to that point is there local personal support for this I mean, will they come help us set it up or help you set it up and be there when you have the inevitable questions for the first however many months till you get there? And we'll keep an eye on that. What I and you'll and the way reason I'm answering it that way is because what we're asking at this point, we were thinking that this would be a presentation night and then they switched representatives on us, which made us both a little "Hmm, what's going on Friday. We had a guy coming tonight and then. Monday morning, we had someone else saying, I'll be there. And we couldn't reach the old one anymore. So we kind of, mm, no, we, we kind of took a step backwards and said, wait, wait a minute, let's, we're going to give this a chance. What I want is authorization to, I mean, not authorize. We're going to continue to explore it. I'd like, I'm, I'm glad to hear a, you have a good reception, but I think we would both like just the authorization that go ahead make sure that it's good for the town. I think that we, we know we have, we share those same concerns. Um, and, uh, we would want, we would need to get going by September one. Tell us when, you know, if, when you're comfortable, it's okay to go ahead with a contact grant without necessarily coming back for, if you feel like this is a good way to spend our, what do we get one shot a year at, at, at something new and the it's, community it, contact. It, it's not a hundred percent guarantee, yeah. but it's certainly, I, we, I think we would have a good chance. Right. It's just so well, I can't tell you the hundred percent we're going to get it, but, but when I, at the trade show, because clear cups there every. That's every how we met. I, I met them and then right. introduced yeah. them. To and Linda. they said at the time when I was talking to them um, about it, then they said that most. I think like yeah. most of the new implementations were coming through the right. the compact, so and just good. Yeah, and they were so confident in at least our representative up to last week that. They would get us uploaded and started and moving. And if we didn't get the grant, they would say, no problem. We'll you we'll stop you right, we'll stop right there. And then we started talking. Well, if that really did happen, maybe we would put something on special town meeting uh, yeah, and ask and just to go forward. Ha- have it continued anyways, because yeah. what we would be losing is one year's worth, but um, but it's it, but it's important. Mm-hmm. Does that cover it for you? Yeah. yeah, we're looking forward to whatever yeah, Troy brings forward to. I mean, I'm definitely going to be bringing forward to you. Um, there's still some more homework on our end, uh, the personnel management software system. Right, which is which is very different. Right, very different. With benefits, I mean, covering the benefits and, uh, and pretty much everything. Onboarding. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's just uh, vote to give you, uh, make a motion to give you the go ahead to explore and bring back to us what you feel is a good thing and you know i'm ready to just say go with it and do it now with the government <laughs> <Bring it. laughs> you know because it sounds good 
Second Joyce's motion. Yeah. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Vegan? Yes. Heiser? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, you know, very much. You know what? We don't need them to come. You did a great job, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> right? Don't waste, don't waste their time. You did a great job. <laughs> Edmond, I think Troy is here for Alex's schedule, but I know he has a long ride home, so I was wondering if yeah. we could just who's that? that? I think a couple of the other two items. Um, um, how the media schedule adjustment. Alex is too important. <laughs> Are you afraid of that? Alex doesn't need support. <laughs> <laughs> so the folks at home, sorry at the deal of our backs of our heads. Um, I'm the only operator operating today. So, um, all right. So reason for the change is because I'm going to grad school um, in the fall. We want to master in Boston, um, which means there are some changes to the when I'm in town. Really, this is what really what it really is. Um, uh, the department doesn't really have any office hours but they'll go as as follows um monday tuesday thursday so i'm sorry monday tuesday fridays it'll be like a 10 to 7 where that could change depending on um events so go on in town um wednesday would be eight in the morning to 12 that due to a class that's at two um uh, and then i'm sorry a class is at three then uh thursday eight to 11 which is because of a class at two uh, these times are very particular due to a low acceptance rate. And one of eight people who actually got accepted into the program. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, and I know it does affect um, some things that go, like select board meetings and town uh, meeting. Um, I just want to clarify that we I we hired someone that um, who has experience in community media. So we think that it should be an easy transition into this. Um, that's not like I'm training someone in broadcast. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Just, Linda, were you going to give me that to sign tonight? Thank you. Thank if you, if you leave it with me, I've got a whole bunch oh. of signatures for them. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, totally. Um, so we, we think it should be an easy transition into um, broadcast. Um, we don't, we're not, I'm not training someone from scratch. And do this, and it's now select like board meetings are now much a simpler process than they were earlier in the winter. Um, where else <laughs> it was a little 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 quonk, quonky, but it took took it took, took some time to uh, figure out. I believe that got all figured out. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Um, so I'm hoping between the both of those, it'll be easy transition for a new person to go in and take care of select board when I'm not here. Um, and I'm trying to make it so that first few went, first few went, weeks of September, I'm actually on Zoom for that class, suggesting if something else goes wrong while that other person is training, I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, and then town meeting is non-negotiable. I'm here for town meeting. I um, just want to make that clear. Um, and because the semester is going to be a little messy with the transition of new employee, me going to grad school, um, I am working an independent study that's going to Explore um, about solutions to uh, fund the department for the future. Since we are a municipal department, um, we are funded much differently and ran much differently than our nonprofit uh, neighbors. Um, so um, I think that hopefully that could sweeten the deal a little bit to uh, ease everyone's anxiety. I hope. Um, and then there will be equity in the department, as now I'm not. I know there's some issues with previous directors. Uh, I'm not going to make this person do everything. I'm going to make sure I do my fair share of all the meetings, all the events that go on during the week. Um, so I just want to throw that out there too. And Carolyn, do you have a concerns or recommendation on this? No, we've met, Troy and I met with Alex. Um, we are going to see how it goes for the, this first semester. Um, because we are, we're very proud of Alex for doing this. Yep. But I, we do have to look at what the needs are for the town and make sure that all the needs are met. So we have that agreement that we're going to keep an eye on this and be very um, communicate 
any concerns. And I worked very closely with Alex as we were going through the uh, production assistant um, hiring process. Uh, when we were looking at candidates, we looked specifically at candidates that had a select board experience, um, different committees and boards. I'm proud to announce that today, mm -hmm. um, Patrick LaBelle accepted the position um, and he does have um, filming of select board and different committees and so on and so forth experience. And, and we met with him. He's a great guy. We think you guys will really like him. Um, and I think he'll be a great addition to Alex's team and the team here in Hadley and uh, be a great uh, asset for Alex that can support him in this effort. Um, Alex has really thought this through. I want you to know he he's worked with me closely over this time, um, you know, seeking advice and counsel on how he can make this work. I, I'm personally super proud of him for all the effort that he's put in to get accepted into this program and to come up with a great plan for a resolution uh, to this. And I, I can only uh, take my hat off to him for all the hard work he's put into this effort to come visit with you guys this evening. And I do want to point out the new clerk, first of all, thank you, Trey. And I do want to point out that uh, Patrick's very passionate about community media. He's very outgoing. He's me. I think he's going to be a great fit. Um, Cause what, not only do I look at, um, Who's coming? Who who has experience? Who could operate a camera? Knows how to spell camera? Who is also very outgoing? Who will be good with people? Because this is not just a can operate a camera job. But you're also interacting with the public too. So that's something I can look for. It's always I always look for um, whether it be here or my other job. But we know about his technical skills as far as if something doesn't work. Like I see you over there struggling a lot of times trying to make sure things work properly do, do have you talk with him about his skills in that department we, we did a little bit i mean is it inevitable to uh, avoid technical issues in video production no matter what you're going to experience them um and that's not a choice you're going to have sometimes like last suck board meeting my streaming computer decided i'm not going to work for you and it's, i don't know why don't know what happened um but it just happened and but I think what Randy's getting at is troubleshooting, right? Some people are great when technology works, mm -hmm. but freeze when something goes wrong. So just, it sounds like Patrick's been doing this for a while, maybe with different software. But mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll just add uh, to Alex's credit, he did incorporate some of these scenario type questions into the interview. Okay. Um and um, he did commit to doing a mock select board meeting uh, as, as a training exercise to kind of walk through some of these potential bugs and kinks. Um, I think that was the other hole too when I was trying to have other people do select board meetings was that we never had an opportunity or I never gave the opportunity to really um, give that person training that's not during a select board meeting. And I'll admit to that, that was mm -hmm. to live and learn. Situation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, nothing's perfect in this world, dear. No, <laughs> but uh, we're going to we're going to do mock meetings. We're going to set up breakdowns, set up multiple times mm -hmm. as much as we have to. Good. Um, so it's like you've covered all areas. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. I mean, I'm in. I'm in favor of giving it a giving it a whirl. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you know, first and foremost, uh, never want to hold anybody back, and and want to support our employees. And I think it's fantastic that you're pursuing that. That you get into the program, and uh, don't want to lose you to this. So hopefully, it all works out. And actually, it's almost my work anniversary soon, and I want to thank the select board and Carolyn for giving me the opportunity. Um, it's been a great learning experience. Uh, I love working here. Everyone, all the department heads and everyone else I get interact with have been great so far. So um, I love it here. I'm going to continue here for as long as I can. So we're glad you're here. You do an you. excellent job. Thank you. you. Do a great job. Everybody is very happy that you're in that position. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you. Anyone you don't else? need a, Do we need a motion to accept or are we just good to no. go? 
All right, thank you. Good luck, Alex. Thank you. Start juggling the balls. And <laughs> so get good at it. Careful now, Randy. All right. Uh, so we've jumped around a lot, so making sure that we got everything. Okay. Um, I think we're at 6.6 .6 now. Yes, I the, think you're right. Uh, open meeting complaint from May 17th, 2023. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. So I have the complaint in front of me, but I pulled up. Did I get trigger happy on my computer? No. Anyway, <laughs> might need to like read the board docs. Oh, I, think yeah. I have the complaint. I'm trying to go back to the. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. On May 17th, 2023, uh, we have been. Uh, we were served a open meeting uh, law complaint by Susan Demolino, um, a Hadley resident. And on uh, the select board discussed two items. Her complaint is that the select board discussed two items that were not on the posted and dated agenda, town route nine paving issues and mass DLT signage. On May 23rd, 2023, I contacted the chair, Amy Parsons, and made her aware of the alleged violations and sought feedback on one of the items. I received no response. The board has met at least twice since May 17th and has not uh, re reposted the items for discussion in compliance with OMI. So, uh, the select board through the town administrator, who is assumed to be compiling the board's agenda, has repeatedly alleged violated OML, and despite four previous OML complaints of a similar nature, still cannot seem to get it right, making this an intentional violation. Okay. Um, and then the action that she was looking for. Okay, go ahead. Um, as with all the other open meeting law complaints, I'm requesting that select board learn and apply open meeting law correctly and supervise the town administrator in doing the same. There we go. Um, Is there a resolution? Mm -hmm. Well, so our our essentially our response was, um, can I read that? Can we read that? Sure. Okay. So the two items that were in reference um, in the complaint were both unanticipated uh, due to a grant deadline and a public concern regarding recent activity on a Route Nine widening project coordinated by Mass DOT. Um, so that would be agenda item 3.1, uh, which was to address the public's concerns over major construction project being completed by Mass DOT. Um, and we have at the time received multiple uh, correspondences and um, phone calls. So the information was of great public importance and the select board needed to hear the concerns in order to help mitigate the major disruption to the business and residents of the town. So, and also agenda item 6.4, um, it was an important grant to pursue, um, to ensure safety for bicyclists on our rural dangerous roads. Uh, we were made aware of the grant shortly before the due date. Um, if we had waited until the next select board meeting to approve, we would have missed the submission deadline. So that was our response. Um, that was the response to the AGO's office. Did we yeah. send a response to? We have not. Okay. That's the purpose of That's, this is to yeah. for you guys to discuss it and then send um, the complainant a response and a copy it to uh, the uh, attorney general's office. I, I have had correspondences with them. 
I'll make a motion for us to send the uh, response to Susan Del Molina. You got what I want to say? Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of informal email. I'm assuming yeah. we would want to make it a little bit more Did you want to make professional it? in terms of a response to the... Yeah, and if you can, point. I will, yeah. on behalf of the board, I will... Um, and, and Amy, you can review it and you can sign it as the chair if everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. But similar to what I what's written here is mm -hmm. for those reasons um, and which do fit uh, being able to post after the 48 hours in advance. But um, we'll do that formally in writing. OK. Mm -hmm. Is that. there a second? Uh, yeah, I'll second that. OK, motion and second. Any further discussion on this? I, I guess the only. Um, so Carolyn has put the process for responding to open meeting law complaints in here. Mm -hmm. I would just encourage everybody on the board to please read this. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward, um, but it's hard when you get caught up, you know, because there's some months where we don't meet every other week, but I think I think we need to instill a discipline that any time something like that comes in and Amy sends it to us, we need to make sure that it does show up on an agenda so that we can. The response to the. Oh, the, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it's not a situation. Um, we can't really delegate that to Carolyn. Like Carolyn can certainly draft the response for us, but it still needs to come in front of us is my understanding so that we. So we have a role to play here, yes. I guess is my point. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. You ready for the vote? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Iser? Yes. Um, the DPW uh, 6.7 uh, DPW feasibility group, uh, October 14th is touch a truck. And I think, Jim, you're here for that? He is. That be me. Are you on me? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. The, um, <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. DPW feasibility met on seven twenty six to discuss the uh, special town meeting warrant item to put money on there for the design and hiring the OPM for the uh, proposed garage, new DPW garage, and we have. Uh, chosen October 14th, which is a Saturday, as the open, we haven't decided a name for it, but an open house at the DPW facility where people can come in, get a tour, see what's going on, see the, the proposed rough uh, layout drawings of what we hope the facility would kind of look like, and probably hopefully have some kind of refreshments. We're not sure it's gonna be hot dogs and popcorn, or pizza and popcorn and, and some kind of a liquid refreshment, depending on what kind of arrangements we can get. Hopefully have somebody donate some of that thing, some of those things. Also, we will be putting out, compiling a brochure with the help of Weston and Associates, um, kind of a simple eight and a half by 11 trifold that it would give some pictures of what the facility looks today, what it could look like. Um, they proposed a couple, they had a couple of uh, samples and we liked the one that was presented from Holden, which really was a lot of pictures and very little verbiage, um, figuring, that picture, figure, figuring that pictures would be much more descriptive than putting a lot of writing down and verbiage. Alex from, has uh, agreed to take on creating a section of the town webpage. I hope that's still valid, uh, Alex, now that you're gonna be so busy doing your studying. Uh, he was working with Jennifer. To get... Okay, he will be working with Jennifer to get that onto the town website. Western Associates will also compile a fact sheet of the various kind of like a timeline of the existing garage and what's going to happen and what could happen and different information about the garages and what's been going on. You know how tight we are, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're what kind of uh, investigating is how we will distribute these brochures and information. We'll have a lot of it on a town website, which should be able to, you know, get the people that look at the computer and have a computer. But what about those that 
do not readily look at the town website website or look for that kind of information. So we'll try to get some kind of thing out in a mailing, hopefully to the townspeople explaining different things on that so that when the town meeting comes along, the at least those that were interested and could ascend, attend, attend some of these events or whatever will be have some information behind them. But speaking from experience, um, most of the information at <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. yeah. And not really going to go to a town meeting. Okay. Sounds like fun. All right. Thank you. Okay. And um, I, uh, I was going to say, if anyone's looking to donate, is there a someone they should email, call in regards to um, food refreshments, anything like that? Yeah, well, not money. When we, we money would be a problem. If they're going to donate, we would like to have them donate the actual refreshments. Because if we get right. to if we get the mon monetary donation, it presents, believe it or not, some issues. If we get donations of soda, water, um, hot dogs, or whatever it might be, then that's just we use it. But if it has to be money thing, it could be it could complicate stuff. Yeah, no money, just just goods. Are you the point person for that? Actually, right. I would use Scott. I would use Scott for uh, myself. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right, Scott or Carolyn, if anyone's interested in donating food items for this. Right. Cookies, candy, <laughs> brownies. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, 6.9, uh, notice of award for the town's um, ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. Um, so we're to discuss and vote on the notice, which is here. I can read it quickly if you want. Well, it's what, what the notice is, is um, and this is beginning actually, it already began with the schools, but uh, it's a, it's from the um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has is doing a couple of things for us through the Community Development Block Grant. And one of them is the self uh, the ADA self-evaluation and transition planning project, which by law everyone needs to do in their community to see where we're are where where we are deficient. And so it's um pretty intensive. It's uh it's um they do subcontract out, and so they went out to bid for that. But we as the host agency um have to approve of who they recommended. So even though they are ready to start Monday, um, we just need an official vote that they went with the Center for Living and Working Inc. for the above reference pro project, which is a self-evaluation in, in, in a response request for qualifications that were made on April 20th, 2023 from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So town, just you as a select board need to authorize that. Recommend that we authorize the um, selection of uh, the committee. Second. All right, motion and second. Any further discussion? Wilco? I'm sorry. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Iser? Yes. Okay. Um, any other items not anticipated 24 hours in advance? All right, um, go to town administrator's report. So my computer has decided not to open any Word documents. Um, Don't mind. Are you able to? Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So I put in red just in some updates. The feasibility study open house was new. Jim just mentioned that. Um, I did want to let you know, we uh, Scott and I have met with MassDOT over a couple of things, but one of the things that did come up in our meeting yesterday uh, was there is an anticipated detour this fall for the bike path. Um, between East Street and South Maple. Uh, there, it, it looks like 9.5 to 10.6 is going to be the detour, but they do not have the details yet and they'll do an official announcement. But I did want to give you as the select board notice of that. Uh, nothing new on the fiber. Uh, let's see, the classification and compensation, as Troy mentioned, the interviews began and they're going pretty strong. Um, so that's in process. Uh, I just explained to you the ADA self-evaluation, and um, Monday they will be meeting with 
any department head that has responsibilities over a building, as well as Gary Berg will be the lead for that. So they're going to get a whole orientation on what that evaluation will look like um, and schedule those, those visits. Uh, procurement, um, Northeast, uh, we did get some feedback, Jennifer, I put some calls out about the solar. Um, there definitely was areas concern about some of the things that were required um, for that in that RF, uh, RFP. Mm. And um, Gary also got, Gary and I spent some time talking today. He had also received some information that I think is going to be really helpful. We got it from Weston Sampson about some, some uh, tax credits, but also some ability to be able to follow procurement in a different way for these solar projects. So it is what I have found out from my area, um, town administrators, it's getting solar for municipalities is extremely complex and everybody is having challenges. So, um, but we have a couple of things that I think we can look at to, to move forward. And um, the Russell School Reuse Feasibility Study, the RFQ that did come back from town council today, but I have not had time to, to look at it. There's quite a lot of, um, it's just some edits and um, that it's going to take me some time to go through, but then we'll prepare for advertising for that. And green, green community designation, there's a meeting next Tuesday uh, to do the official designation in Southwick. So they invited myself, Amy, and I did extend it to Jane since she's been so involved with that announcement. So those are those updates. Uh, Hadley flood, the risk management outreach project. Uh, Scott, myself. Uh, Chief Bank Nabel uh, met with members of the Silver Jackets to get an update on their their outreach project, and um, it was it was actually very good. And uh, they're going to be working on a storybook, which is similar to a dashboard that the state of Connecticut has. Um, so, if someone is in a flood risk area, they can go to this website, and it will you'll be able to click on any areas of concern that they might have during a flood, or in, just to, just to be preparing. So that is in process. It's ongoing. I'm still talking with Senator Comerford's office about a time um, in August where they'll be meeting with our engineer to, to uh, see where we're at and see the big ticket item and what it's going to cost a, a few years from now when we need to look at that dike for reconstruction. So thank you, Randy. Any questions? Sure. How about, um, well, I'll just, I see it's in your thing here, but the uh, the lift training took place for uh, the ambulance BLS and uh, the fire department is ready to begin ambulance service once the state has issued a license and finished their process. My understanding is he hasn't updated me yet. And we were talking about that lift training today. He hasn't heard from the state yet. Okay, that's good. And Sue, are you still on? Sue Golowski? I am. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Can you um, inform everybody? I was so excited um, on the grants that you received the other day. Can you share with everybody that? that I really want them to know what you did. And I uh, so appreciate your efforts and what you did do. So I wanted to share that with everybody tonight, too. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, I got a $10,000 uh, risk management grant. Uh, to purchase a drone that we can use for building inspections uh, and the water tank inspections and that type of thing. Uh, fire, uh, fire department will use it as well, I'm sure. Um, and then I got um, another grant that purchases three thermal cameras so that, uh, you know, we can check out our buildings for possible leaks and that type of thing, uh, as well as sewer and water, um, and then uh, seven ergonomic chairs. <laughs> so great, seven what ergonomic, ergonomic chairs? <laughs> Making sure everybody's my up. chair is about <laughs> my chair is about forty years old, Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> so well, good time. Glad to hear you got a new one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of happy people in town. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So thanks very much for your efforts. Appreciate it. Thanks, okay. Joyce. Okay. Excellent. Um, are there any items for future discussion? Anyone got a few? Add onto the all right. 
So I've got one. Um, I would love to get an update on where we're at with the dike. I know that there's like a meeting coming up, and um, but just especially given recent weather events, it's the one thing that always keeps me up at night around here. That's what Are I was just referring to. You flood away on Hadley Place. No, I'm fine up there. I'm worried about my friends downstream. That's what I was referring to in my town report. Um, so that's, report. yeah, that's the flood risk management outreach project. It's, it's part of that whole study. With but, and that, yeah, that's what, could you just, um, I, I'll do I a lost track of the, like the whole. Absolutely. So yeah, that, I'll put great. it in some logical order. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm in it so much that I forget. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I knew it was a piece of it, but I knew it wasn't the whole thing either. Yeah. Um. So that's one. And then another one is I would like to um, have the board talk about, and this is every few years we talk about this, um, talk about form of government and just just a conversation to see whether or not we want to even think about um, entering into more conversation about the form of government we have, meaning town administrator compared to town manager. Well, comes up, uh, it's come up in the past. So just kind of talking about what's what's working well, what may not be working well given the complexity and size of the town and whether or not it's something we should even contemplate um, without assuming any outcome there. Um, and then the third one I had was just an opportunity for Carolyn to, uh, I'm just worried with the goals, Carolyn, uh, we set the goals, but then we're gonna start getting into once August hits, then September, forget it. I know you're going to be all in on on the October town meeting, so I thought maybe just to check in on that. Anything else? Okay. Um, are there any liaison reports today? Can I just make a liaison? Um, reminder well especially well liaison to any of the committees uh -huh. i checked in with jess today just to say hey how's everybody doing with their getting sworn in uh -huh. <laughs> um one committee really good another committee i'm on not so much so i sent a reminder out to those and so i think um you know because technically if people aren't sworn in they're they not supposed be to be yeah uh -huh. so just if everybody could remind their people um, to do that. Okay. Announcements? Well, I have a, have a few, couple, three, four. Um, let's see, I have um, the passing of Thomas uh, Kusick. Uh, he, was, he lived here on Route 9, Hopkins Academy grad, really big into drag race and was a fixture up at Lebanon Valley for many years. Um, so our condolences to, um, he was an only child, so he has cousins, uh, Sally Rule and her children. So condolences to them. Uh, Nelson Paquette lives here in town, his wife, uh, Priscilla, and he had two daughters. Um, so condolences to him, uh, to Priscilla and the daughters. We had a Ronald Druska, um, he has a daughter, Lori Swan, and husband, Scott, that live here in town. And then he also has a son, Greg Druzga, Druza. Um, and he is also the cousin of Tommy Sabasco. So condolences um, to Ronald's family. Uh, Richard Dickfill um, passed away, longtime member of Hadley. Um, his brothers are Dennis Philip Hadley, Robert of East Hampton, Ray of Longmeadow, and his sister, um, Sandra Oslick of uh, Hadley. So condolences to um, Dick's family. And that's it for me. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion and seconded. I don't think there's going to be any discussion, so we'll call the vote. Parsons? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Iser? Yes. 